let's take a look at some of the best robots from the community that we've created for the FTC 2526 decode season for week two. That is a really fun way of being able to figure out that base, whether they can actually pick their robot up on a little ramp. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now, and I've coached FTC teams to national championships. And I know that one of the best ways to improve your own robot design is to take a look at what other people have been doing and getting some inspiration on how that community is going. So today we're going to take a look at lots of different intakes and some prototypes that robots will be doing for picking up those artifacts. We'll take a look at some different differential swerves and the coaxial swerve designs that teams have made. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at some full robots that other teams have put out online. So the first thing we're going to take a look at uh, this week is some different prototypes. And this is uh, EMU Robotics Team 4729. And effectively what they've done is they've taken a bunch of different compliant wheels they have access to, light them up on a big pillar, set up on drill, and just push through artifacts to see which wheels are able to pick things up better, what sort of shore hardnesses may work better, what sort of shore hardnesses may uh, work worse. I think this is an excellent way of prototyping and designing out and finding out really quick what things work well, what things don't work well before you actually go into designs. I'm a real big fan of this section because we can see where the ball even wants to be able to uh, have itself going. It looks like these green Andy Mark plant wheels are working pretty well. In any case, this is, looks like active intakes are going to work pretty effectively. It can also help you figure out spacing that works really well on these two. Then we're going to take a look at Team's uh, Blue Crew FTC. I quite like this intake here. It just has a little ball, a little roller, and it's just a little bit of compliance up on the top. So it's constantly pulling itself down. And as it goes to grab that, it kicks up into a couple different boot kickers on looks like a 45 degree ramp. And that's quite effective at picking a ball up and launching it vertically. Just having that little bit of compliance on that little arm really helps this design out. Nice work on that one, Blue Crew. Then we've got this robot from Sigri Eagles. Thought this was a really unique uh, indexer design that they have. Uh, we haven't, well, it's yet to be seeing what's going to be successful, what's not going to be successful this season. Taking a look at their intake, I think their boot kicker, obviously <laughs> it is a very rough prototype, but having some sort of indexer in this idea, I don't believe they had a functioning ball launcher in this, but being able to get this in, having some sort of twisting wheel to be able to move these things around is a really interesting concept as well as using verticality for keeping track of their indexer uh, is a really interesting point. And then we have uh, this team, Metal Magic. Uh, they've got a simple two little ball wheel intake here, a little servo arm that kicks it into their flywheel. And I think that overall, this is a pretty successful little robot just for an intake, just for a little kick to show you just how quickly you can get some prototypes up off the running, especially in this week two. This is exact. This is a great state for your robot being. You have proof of concept and really starting to work and build off of there. One thing that I think we're going to see a lot more this season, and it's been a bit of a meme. Similar to last season was a water game. Uh, this season we might see the uh, remix of Swerve Drive actually coming up and being somewhat viable this season. Uh, so some things and some resources I want to highlight out for you on the Swerve Drive point. Uh, Terra Voxel has a great breakdown of a coaxial swerve drive module here where it uses a servo motor for rotating and turning and then using a bare DC motor through a gear, I think an overdrive to be able to act, oh no, definitely not overdrive, <laughs> gear reduction to be able to uh, push out a wheel there. So this is a really uh, great uh, breakdown on swerve drives. There's also a coaxial swerve drive train here from uh, Veer Hanar, which I think is a really cool place for you to take a look at little more inspiration on the coaxial side on the and then there's also the team cookie bots i believe cookie bots has a cad out of theirs as well so it's an excellent resource for you to go ahead and take a look at on the differential side as opposed to having four swerve uh, wheels you have four omni wheels in the corners and then you have two wheels in the middle that actually do your main powering you still do have two drive motors per um, but these are the wheels that are able to turn and rotate and actually drive your motor around and these things are able to get up pretty quick having a differential swerve drive. This is uh, Electric Whiz. And then we've also got uh, Wolfpack Machina also has out a differential swerve drive here. I believe there is a CAD floating around on this as well. So don't want to write out the idea of having a swerve drive, differential or coaxial. Uh, at this point, it's not really clear which one is better than the other. There's also a Dark Matter Robotics, uh, Team 4150, 
also has another differential uh, swerve drive here uh, as another example for you to be able to take through. It's yet to be seen so far this season about whether a differential or a coaxial is going to be better, but we do know there's going to be a lot of defense being played in this season. So having a little bit of extra traction, perhaps a mechanism wheel may have seen its day uh, when it comes time for pushing, unless teams are able to auto adjust their shooters if their robot gets hit and pushed. Let's keep going. We're going to take a look at some more kind of full robot reveals here. We've got a robot from Unimate. As their robot, they have a couple different boot kickers here with some uh, rotating wheels on their way to pick it up. Looks like they can hold three. I'm a huge fan of seeing wood out of laser cuts on a robot right at the starting phase before going into things like CNC polycarbonate uh, and going into more advanced materials because it's really quick and allows things to get up and running. It looks like they've got a six or five wheel on this flywheel. And clearly their intake is pretty accurate. And again, like I said last week, teams are going to be showing you their best models and the times that things are working perfectly. So again, I don't know if this is actually working as well as they say it is, but looking at that first video shot, it looks pretty successful. As well, it seems as though their flywheel ball launcher is also pretty strong. I'm a big fan of seeing chain as well as a prototyping as opposed to using belts. Belts seem to have exact distances, but chains allow you to uh, move things around to get those distances you actually need. So nice work on this one, Unimate. Then we've got Team Hazmat over here. I think theirs is an excellent one. Uh, this is left over from the robot in 30 hours that the Fun Robotics Network put on. They have a simple boot kicker on the inside here. And then they have a little servo arm that pivots around, which we can see right here. Pivots around, pushes their ball up into their mechanism. And then they also have a larger geared intake so that they can change the angle of their launchers. It's a great starting point on that uh, robot prototype. Then we also have Team High Five here. We looked at their Spindexer last week, but we're actually going to take a look at how it's able to uh, perform in its main shots. And again, we can see that for the most part, having some sort of flywheel launcher seems like it's going to be a bit of an early game meta that's developing at this point. But this is a really unique Spindexer that's designed for a human player to put in to be able to get some of those pattern points. Then we've got from team 11047, screw it, there is a, a sort of catapult style launcher here. And I think we've been seeing a lot of flywheels early, especially because three of the starter robots have a flywheel starter ball launchers as opposed to catapult style ball launchers. And I think looking at some of this footage, you can see just how accurate you can get some of these little catapult uh, launchers. I think the Andy Mark Robits robot is based off of a catapult uh, launcher. And that is a really fun way of being able to figure out that base, whether they can actually pick their robot up on a little ramp and get that up there. Now, in its current state, this would not count because they have their ramp, or maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like the ramp is scraping on the bottom of the ground there. If I am wrong, great, this would count as a level two base to be able to pick up another robot. You would have to have a perfect robot to be able to match that chassis. But that is a super creative way of making a quick low forklift to be able to base that robot up and down. So excellent work on that one. Team Screw It, I'm looking forward to seeing how you can adapt that sort of forklift design to apply to more robot kinds that may not be a perfect square. Then we've got Tech Attack 22417. They've got an interesting little compliant wheel intake here from the side. And with having that running quite quick on two what looks like 6,000 RPM motors, uh, they may also be 1150. Running that ball up a 45 degree angle, that thing goes up wicked quick, no problems getting that out, and then into a sort of uh, slightly hooded flywheel design here. You can get that launching up quite quick, and I'm not sure how accurate it is, but you can get quite a bit of speed running around on that. So pretty cool little intake, and then some little boot kickers to be able to push it up into the main uh, flywheel on their robot. That is definitely a design worth uh, prototyping and iterating upon. And then as an update from last week, Team Astro Machina has done a little more iterating on the robot. Looks like they got a little polycarb on here now. And they're just showing off the accuracy of their little two-wheel flywheel intake. So it's going to be interesting to see where the rest of this season goes. Our flywheels, flywheels seem to be an early meta right now, but looking at teams like ScrewTac, it doesn't necessarily mean that flywheels are the only meta that is actually going 
going to work or if there's actually going to be the only one that's actually going to be accurate or reliable. And I think that having a catapult, especially if you use spring tension as opposed to something that's a little more elastic, you may more likely have more accurate shots over time. Because with a fly, you really have to wait for that to spin up and you have to have some sort of encoders in there so that you know that your RPM is coming back consistent every time. So perhaps a catapult may have more throughput. I'm not sure yet, to be honest. And it's going to be interesting to see where these things start to shape up and where teams start to really take that. So something I've just recently released is a new memberships option for this channel. So if you want to get some more active resources, uh, some more step files, some more code files that I'm putting out in writing, you want to get a little more in-depth on some of the behind the scenes, some of the more uh, specific uh, data that I have and some of the tests that I run, or you want to get some more personalized feedback on your projects, you can consider joining on one of my membership peers down below. It really does help support the channel out and it will help give you some extra resources for moving on this season. So I hope you found that helpful this week looking at a bunch of different robot designs in FTC Fridays. In the link in the description down below, you can submit your robot design uh, if you'd like to be featured on a future FTC Fridays. And otherwise, best of luck out there this season.